to try other forms of potentially life-saving treatments were denied. That's right. And Nicole Neely, founder and president of Parents Defending Education, has been on the forefront of issues like this. Nicole, thanks for being here with me today. Thank you with for both of us. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're so grateful you could be here. For those of us who don't know, will you tell us about your group? Sure. Parents Defending Education is a national membership organization that gives parents both the knowledge and the tools they need to be empowered to be involved in their children's education. Because as we saw during lockdown, Parents were kept at arm's length, and there are power brokers who just don't want families to be involved in their children's education or, frankly, in many aspects of their children's lives, yeah. frighteningly. Yeah, Tracy, I'm sure you have a lot to say about this as a mother yourself. I do, uh, and I'll, I'll say just a little about it because I don't want to teenagers. What's the response been from other parents? I think, for first, people are just shocked at what is going on in schools. We have what's called a, um, a parental exclusion policy tracker. We have identified at this point about 1,100 school districts across America that say that you as a parent do not have a right to know your child's gender identity at school. We've seen districts like in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, they did a teacher training and they said that um, that information must be earned. Um, which is appalling. But then you look at states like California, where you combine a mindset like that with the medical age of consent being 12, and you have a real recipe for disaster. This is like jaw-dropping information for me, that a parent could be told that they have to earn information about their minor child. Like, right. bizarre. Yes. Um, and so we see some schools that are trying to hide behind FERPA, it's a, the Federal Privacy Act, saying that children have a right for privacy from their parents. Um, and school districts making that assertion that, okay, well, we'll decide if a child, you know, if they decide that they're a different gender, if a parent is safe. You know, that's not, we, we are entitled to due process, and certainly schools are mandatory reporters. If you think a family is unsafe, there's a process for that. But it is not up to the math teacher to say, all right, you're a Republican, you're a Catholic, I think that you wouldn't be a good parent to your child, wow. which is appalling. Yeah. Very appalling. Yeah. And when we kind of talk about the Indy Gregory case, which we were just speaking about earlier, you know, that's kind of a, a different vein of this. But, I mean, parental rights was a huge aspect of why Indy ultimately ended up losing her life. Her parents were not given the option to make that decision. It was put in the hands of doctors. Right. What, what are you seeing on that front? Sure. I think we're seeing a lot of bad things come out of California, unsurprisingly. Yeah. Um, and so we're seeing this kind of move to put the rights of the child, pitting that against the rights of the parent, mm -hmm. um, which is something that's astonishing. I mean, I look at, again, yeah, the medical age of consent being very low. And we have watched Planned Parenthood push to put reproductive health clinics into schools. Yeah. In 2022, we identified, we found a contract um, that a school board was going to vote on in, in a majority minority district, um, and it was going to um, provide all kinds of reproductive health services, including IUDs, including birth control, and services that, that couldn't be provided on school grounds, which would be abortions, which would be hormones. Ch the children would be taken off the school grounds to have those services provided. So you as a parent could conceivably come home and find your daughter bleeding to death on the bathroom floor and not have any idea, because also in the fine print of the contract, it said all medical records are to be maintained by the provider, by Planned Parenthood. Wow. So even if you pulled your daughter out, you'd never have access to those files or what treatments right. she had received. And who's mm -hmm. responsible for that child when they have to go to the hospital? Ultimately, it's the parent, right. but they're stepping in and trying to parent your child. Right. So it's really throwing up that big wall between parent and child, both on the medical front as well as, I mean, think about that these teachers are using our tax dollars in public schools to imply that, all right, well, if you have a different life choice, your parents probably won't love you. That yeah. damage is lasting. I yeah. mean, it's horrifying. Yeah. Nicole, right. what can we do as parents? I mean, honestly, because a lot of times you feel it's frightening, to be honest with you. Right. It's frightening to know that somebody, the state could take your parent, your children away right. because they don't believe what you believe. And, and certainly that's a great point. I mean, we are seeing states as well that are saying, well, things like this and gender ideology should be taken into custody decisions. That um, in Cincinnati public schools, they encourage teachers to call child protective services if they thought that a family would be unsupportive. Yeah. Um, and so we tell parents, forewarned is forearmed. And so please figure out what your district is. We track all these, all these issues. Um, we put them on. We have a map we called our indoctrination map. Um, and so people can look up and see what's going on, what are the laws in their states, what are the policies in their districts. And we encourage people to send us tips because, um, you know, obviously people are frightened to speak up. Right. We are more than happy to be the bad guys yeah. and call out these bad actors. And we have taken districts to court over these parental exclusion policies and will continue to do so. Good. Nicole, you're clearly very passionate about this. I'm curious, before we let you go, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to really get involved in helping parents know their rights and fight for them. I really feel strongly about civil rights um, in general because my grandparents actually met in an internment camp in California. So a government that is big enough to give you everything you want is also big enough to take it all away. Wow. And so I think really we have to be vigilant on all of these issues and use the courts, use the Constitution, and really you know call on the moral 
compass of, of our fellow Americans. Again, no, most people have no idea that this is taking place. When they do know, they speak up, it gives them the reason to get involved. And so, you know, not only the law, but also, you know, the, 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 the Lord is on our side. Yeah, that's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Nicole, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate yeah, it. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, we're going to turn